You are watching the press preview, the first look at what's on the front pages as they arrive. It's time to see what's making the headlines with the columnist Carol Malone and the political editor of the Liverpool Echo, Liam Thorpe. They'll be with us from now right up until just before midnight. So let's see what's on some of those front pages for you now. Reacting to the resignation of the Metropolitan Police Commissioner, the Metro has the headline, Cressida Ditched. The Eye also writes about the Met Chief losing her job after a succession of scandals. That same story features on the front of the Daily Telegraph. The Guardian adds that she has been forced out over toxic culture failings. The Times also writes that there is a scramble for a new Met Chief after the abrupt resignation of Dame Cresta Dick. The Daily Mail tells the same story, asking what took so long. The Daily Express focuses on the Queen coming into contact with Prince Charles two days before he tested positive for COVID. The FT looks at the government's plans to overhaul financial regulatory practices after Brexit. And a reminder that by scanning the QR code you'll see on screen during the programme, you can check out the front pages of tomorrow's newspapers while you watch us. And tonight we're joined by Carol Malone and Liam Thorpe. Welcome to you both. Uh, let's start uh, with the story of the night and the front page of the Metro, uh, Cresta Dick's resignation. Carol expected? Yeah, you know, not really. I mean, it should have happened a long time ago, but not expected in the sense that it was only this morning that she said she had absolutely no intention of resigning. And this was after Sadiq Khan, London's mayor, had put her on notice that if she didn't sort out the toxic culture in the Met Police, that she'd be fired. And there we have at the end of the day where she, she suddenly says, yes, I will resign. I mean, this is long overdue, you know. After the Sarah Everard murder, um, and it was you know, murdered by one of her officers, Wayne Cousins, um, she should have gone in because, because especially because confidence in the uh, women's confidence in the police had been destroyed by that, and she should have gone. But then she was offered another two-year extension, and I don't know why, because since since the woman took office. There has been a catalogue of disasters, you know, ranging over years, you know, Operation Midland, this, you know, the Extinction Rebellion, they took over London, they brought the city to a standstill, the officers couldn't handle it. She didn't, she didn't, uh, the serial killer, um, Stephen Port, he wasn't. Um, arrested, they missed many chances to arrest him. It, she just is not fit for purpose. She should never have been in charge of the capital's police force, never. Liam, um, it does make you wonder what she submitted to the mayor, her, her report by way of wanting to, to change things and her plans for, for the future, because he said that that absolutely wasn't uh, up to standard. Yeah, as Carol said, um, you know, earlier today, she was she was quite robust in, in saying that she was she had no intention whatsoever of, of stepping aside. She then obviously submitted whatever her plan was for, for improving things to Sadiq Khan, and he was clearly deeply unimpressed by, by her efforts. He then made it, clear that he, made it clear how he felt about that and summoned her to a sort of showdown meeting. But rather than go to that meeting, it's reported that she then just handed in her resignation. Um, so it's like she sort of knew the writing was on the wall in that sense. But it's not clear that Sadiq Khan was going to sort of force her out at that point. But she, she chose to sort of go before perhaps she was pushed. It's an interesting kind of dynamic that's going on here because... Sadiq Khan, as the mayor of London, has effectively withdrawn his confidence and has has sort of been the kind of final nail in the coffin for Cressida Dick. But it seems like the Home Office were were not really aware that this had happened, and it kind of came to them as a bit of a surprise. Although they are now the people who will will hire a successor, so it's a sort of strange separation of powers. Uh, it's it's all part of the kind of mix of devolution that we don't quite always know how it works. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I would agree with Carol. I think that the catalogue of scandals and 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 errors is is so long. I was I was going through them before, and it's a it's a really really long charge sheet, if you will, dating back you know all the all the way back to the, the situation with John Charles de Menezes, where of course Cressida Dick was the the operational commander of of that mission of that tragic mission. That, um, and obviously the family of John Charles de Menezes have always said that they didn't think she should be made uh, commissioner. I think the same has been said for the family of Daniel Morgan, who uh, Cressida Dick was greatly criticised for delaying that investigation. 
And then, as Carol says, obviously, the, the Sarah Everard, both the, the, the situation with her tragic murder and the, the, the policing of the vigil, those awful scenes that we saw. And then more recently, this Charing Cross um, investigation, which really highlights that toxic culture um, within the Met. Removing Cressida Dick isn't going to change that overnight, but you, you have to start at the top with these things if you really want to get root and branch reform. The VI uh, suggests that her, her day didn't end in the manner in which it started at 11am. Her quote is, I have absolutely no intention of going at uh, nine minutes past seven this evening. It is with huge sadness that I step aside. Um, does this suggest that, that she has something of a, a, a tin ear or, or definitely displayed those qualities in, in the job? She doesn't seem to have been aware of, of the culture and some actually accusing her of, of denial. Julia, I think you're absolutely right. You know, even today when she was talking in an interview, she's, she doesn't see the reality of what's actually happening in her force. She said today that the Met had undergone a transformation, that it was more professional, more transparent, more accountable. It's simply not true. The, the Met is in a mess. And I think, I think the final nail in the coffin has been what's been happening over the past few weeks. You know, many weeks ago, she said she wasn't going to investigate the Downing Street parties. Then she changed her mind. And at the time she's doing that, her force is imploding. You know, she's she's invested, she's conducted 50 interviews with people who work at Whitehall about these parties at a time when officers in her force are being accused of racism and sexism and homophobia. And she's not dealing with that. She's dealing with offences in Downing Street, which is violent, disgusting as they are. They're, they're going to end in a few fines and fixed penalty notices. What's happening in her force is far more lethal. And, and it's like she was blind to that. She kept on saying things were going to change, she was going to do things, but she never, ever did. And I think, you know, as Liam says, go right back to 2005. It was kind of clear then, after, after a, an innocent man got shot because of her incompetent officers, it was kind of written then that she wasn't fit to be a leader, but then she's gone on to be you know, the first woman, gay woman leader of the Metropolitan Police. And I think, you know, part of the reason that it's taken so long to get rid of her is because she was the first woman. And it, they didn't want to be seen. I mean, every time I used to write anything critical about Cressida Dick, there was a there was there was a hardcore of people who would say, you're a misogynist. This is about womanhood. This is because she's a woman. No, it's not. It was because she was pretty useless at the job. And maybe that's given her time that she shouldn't have had. She should have been, she should not have been granted this two-year extension. She should never have been offered it. But, you know, we are where we are. Liam, do, do you agree with that? Do you, do you believe that she was kept in post because she was a, a woman? I, I don't know. That, that's difficult to say. Obviously, it was, a, it was a, an important moment that, that a, a woman was made the first G, uh, chief constable, the first commissioner, sorry. Uh, that is an important moment, and I think it would be good if if, if a woman could succeed her, um, I don't know if that's bought her extra time. Um, just on the on the party gate issue that Carol mentioned, um, I think let's not forget as well. I think she's dramatically mishandled that as well, or the Met certainly have. You know, it wasn't too long ago we, we were being told that um, none of the the potential offences or the parties in Downing Street could be investigated because they happened a year ago. Everybody knew that was absolute nonsense, uh, and then it quick, they quickly had to sort of reverse ferret. And when they did that, it, it interrupted the Sue Gray investigation. There's a lot of questions now hanging over how that investigation into the Downing Street parties continues. It's a, it's a real messy situation, and they'll, they will want to bring someone in quite quickly. Um, but, yeah, I, know, I think just fundamentally, you know, ordinary people have lost confidence in, in her and, and in the force that she runs. And, with you know, as Sadiq Khan said today, we do, we do police by consent. And if the people have lost faith in, in her and her ability to, to change things, then, you know, she, she's going to have to go. And that will be the major challenge to restore confidence. Uh, we're going to have to go to a, a break, Carol. Um, do stay with us, of course. Coming up, a frosty reception for the Foreign Secretary in Moscow. That and major criticism from one Prime Minister to another when we come back. Just want to bring you some breaking news now on the situation in Ukraine. And this is uh, from President Biden, who says that American citizens should leave Ukraine now. It's actually quoted as saying that things could go crazy quickly in Ukraine. Um, and also he says that we would not send US troops into Ukraine to rescue Americans 
who might be fleeing. Uh, he says he would not send in troops, just to reiterate that, into, into Ukraine to rescue Americans who might be fleeing the, the situation there. Um, and uh, Biden also says he's done a deep dive on uh, our four potential supreme um, situations that might arise out of that situation in Ukraine with 100,000 Russian troops amassed on the border. So President Biden saying that things could go crazy quickly in Ukraine and US citizens should leave now. You are watching the press preview and uh, still with me, Carol Malone and Liam Thorpe. Um, so you heard there that very latest from President Biden, uh, extremely worrying what, what he's had to say to US citizens. Uh, meanwhile, we were going to have a look at the Telegraph and the, the visit of Liz Truss to Moscow. Um, it couldn't have gone any worse, could it, Liam? <laughs> no, I don't think any of us were expecting it to go particularly well. Um, you know, um, Lavrov has not um, often uh, sort of <laughs> heaped praise on on on, on Western uh, compatriots when it, when it, when they've met. Um, He's, he's described Liz Truss as, as deaf, as unprepared. He, he mocked her about her geographical knowledge. Um, she's she's sort of hit back and 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 claiming that that she is she's ha she's achieved more in this meeting than than he certainly suggests. But it, it it's ended in complete and utter stalemate. It hasn't got anywhere because ultimately there is there is very little movement to be had. You know, um, the the West are, are, and NATO are not going to accept Russia's demand that that Ukraine cannot join NATO. And, and Russia is not going to back down from that, it would seem. So, that unfortunately, today's meeting um, did not achieve anything whatsoever. Um, and, and instead, we're hearing from, from President Biden, we're hearing from Boris Johnson today, you know, a real kind of ramping up of the, of the warnings and the rhetoric. Boris Johnson said uh, we're on the precipice. And as you, say, as you just said then, Joe Biden has said things could go crazy quite quickly. Analysts and, and people who know the situation well have said that, you know, Russia perhaps is is now moving is now very close or at a situation where it could potentially invade and and that's obviously just a, a disastrous thing for for everyone involved. Uh, Carol, just got about thirty seconds to to go to the metro and uh, John Major and what he's had to say. Ah, yes, this is one of the most unremarkable prime ministers of all time coming into uh, attack breaking cover to attack Boris Johnson. Um, you know, it, it makes you wonder. He's so embittered and angry about his own pitiful record as Prime Minister that he's attacking someone else. As one commentator said today, watching him attack Johnson is like watching a tiny goldfish square up to a blue whale. He just looks like a, an embittered, failed politician. And this is not about party gate. This is about Brexit. This is this is an arch Brexit. Sorry, uh, this is an arch Remainer coming up again because Boris did something that he didn't want to happen. He achieved what people like Major said was impossible, and he got us out of Europe. And Major wants to reverse that. And I think he'd rather see Keir Starmer who uh, wants another referendum rather than Boris. Uh, and Liam, there there are those who would say, but uh, perhaps. Uh... John Major was never accused of being a liar. Well, John Major, uh, Carol's right in one sense. John Major's never been a, a fan of Boris Johnson, and it's not a surprise, perhaps, that he's spoken out against him. But what he said was really powerful today. He said that if you are a liar, if you've lied to Parliament, you should resign. It's pretty clear to most people that when Boris Johnson said there were no parties, no rules broken, that was not true. Liam. So he, you know, he should resign. Liam, 